Hello, I am Ronan Chris Murphy, and uh, I'm a guitar player, but I'm much better known as a producer and engineer. And uh, I love recording guitars, and I've been lucky enough to work with what I think are some of the greatest guitar players in the world, and other people kind of share that opinion as well. And uh, But if you've ever hung out and, you know, talked to me about guitar recording or guitar tone or seen me sort of do demonstrations, you'll know that I love traditional approaches to guitar recording. I love putting a microphone on a speaker, capturing the output of a real amp, usually a tube amp, but there's some times where solid state amps work really cool as well. But generally, I love good tube amp, uh, hitting a speaker and putting a microphone on it as a way to get great guitar sounds. I find that to be extremely powerful, extremely flexible, and most importantly, I find that to work really well in mixes. Um, because again, this is about recording and that's all that kind of matters when you're making a record. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of digital amp modelers. I, I haven't been. They've made huge strides and they've gotten so much better in the last 20 years that I've been using them. But I still find the traditional way works better. And um, the biggest thing, again, aside from the fact that the tones I generally love are mics on tube amps. Uh, but I find the working in a mix with digital amp modelers can be much more challenging uh, because often I find that they, they na don't naturally pop out of the speakers as well as traditional guitar recording. Uh, and also they can tend to go in and kind of go to battle with the other elements. So actually I find my lead vocals kind of sound, often sound worse or the other guitars or the drums because we use digital amp modelers. That said, if you are using digital amp modelers and you love it, you love the sounds you are getting, you love the way they work in mixes, they're fantastic for your creative vision and workflow, I'm not here to try and change your mind. But a lot of people share my opinion. They share sort of my passion for these traditional ways of recording guitar amps, putting a mic on a speaker, capturing the output of a tube amp. But they'll say, I can't do it because I live in an apartment or I live in a house. We've got a newborn baby or I've got, you know, neighbors down the street, any of those kinds of things. And like, well, those things might be true, but I don't really believe that any of those prohibit somebody from recording guitars in the traditional way. So you don't have to believe me or trust me on this. I put together a little demonstration um, to test that theory that you need to shake the building to do a good job recording uh, tube guitar amps. And you can just watch the demo and make your own decision. So let's check it out. All right, so that is just a little riff I came up with, with this morning. And again, I spent about two minutes or so dialing in the guitar sounds on that, put a single mic up and recorded it. And uh, that's a pretty good, uh, you know, without much dialing in, a pretty good rock uh, guitar sound. Uh, does it sound like a big, loud guitar amp? It sort of does to me. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play it for you. And uh, you can actually see from the image uh, how far away the speaker cabinet is. And I'm actually going to switch between the full mix that you're hearing, and then I'm gonna switch over to what is actually happening in the room. So it's gonna be the audio of this whole mix in Pro Tools over to the audio of me playing, you know, laying down one of the guitar tracks and just the audio from my cell phone. So let's check that out.
so you can kind of put it into perspective. This 412 cabinet right here. Tapping on that. So just to give you an idea of the kind of levels we're recording at, you know, I'm here next to the amp and um, this is exactly the same as uh, our demonstration track. So let's check it out. guess is what we're hearing in that uh, cell phone recording is we probably even hear more of the strings and we certainly will probably hear a lot more of me talking than this so and uh, I'll go ahead and switch back and forth between the two with me sitting here all right so let's dig into this tune a little bit and kind of see what we've got and um, yeah, the reason I'm playing this for you and showing it to you is to see if you really do need to wake up the neighborhood to record some kind of decent sounding rock guitars. And uh, yeah, I'll let you be the judge of that. So here's the track. So this is real simple. This is just a seven track recording at this point. It's just stereo overheads a kick and a snare and so I'll play it and then I'll solo them for you so you can actually get a sense of how they uh, how they send on their own and back in context. So overall, I'm pretty happy. So these guitars that we're listening to, they are a Shure SM57 up on the grill of the uh, cabinet uh, into a mic pre, which is an A Design Specifica in my case here, uh, straight into the DAW. There's no EQ, no compression, no nothing, just a single mic. You can see that. But what I want to do is I'm going to play you this second one, the one that we've got panned over to the right, and uh, we'll play it and then solo that and I want you to listen to see if you hear anything interesting there and let me pan that in the middle for you all right I'll tell you what to listen for see if you actually hear the pick <laughs> hitting the strings of the guitar and I'm rec I'm actually playing this guitar standing about 12 or 15 feet away from uh, the amp see if you hear the pick <laughs> Alright, so I hope that's kind of convinced you that you actually don't have to push a lot of volume to to do traditional miking. But, but, and this is really important, um, to be able to pull this off, you have to use the right kind of amp. And the right kind of amp is going to be an amp, very popular like in the 80s, there was a lot of these coming out, but amps that get most of their tone from the preamp section versus the power amp section. So this Rivera, a lot, it's preamp, most of the tone is coming from the preamp section, even though it's a 320 watt uh, amp. A lot of Mesa Boogie amps, again, most of their tone, distortion, all that's coming from the preamp section. Um, you know, Kitty Hawk, a lot of, you know, 80s rack mount sort of things. And so most of the, that tone is coming from the preamp section. So you're not, um, you don't have to push the power amp hard to get the tone. On the other side of things, something like a Vox AC30, a Marshall JC, uh, JCM800, uh, Fender Twins, those kind of amps, they love to work the power amp section hard and so much of that cool tone is the power amp starting to break up. So if you are gonna take this approach, if you wanna start using real amps and uh, in, a, in a setting, uh, that doesn't wake up the neighbors, get you kicked out of your apartment, something like that. You want to be looking at different amps that have you know, preamps that really create a lot of that tone. All right, that is it for now. I hope that was helpful, fun, entertaining, and maybe helped open your eyes a little bit to some of the options you might have available 
uh, in recording. And uh, yeah, if you dig this video, if it's on YouTube, subscribe, click that bell button, all that kind of good stuff. And if you want to kind of learn more about what I'm up to, you can just go to ronanchrismurphy.com. All right, see ya.